have no clue which power tool to buy first and how to use it, today I'm gonna show you. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and this is my husband, Sean. Hello. One of the most frequent questions I get asked is, which power tool should I buy first? And what order would you recommend purchasing your power tools? So I wanted to cover that today, show you my top three favorites, which order to buy them in. I'm gonna kinda of give you a general overview on what they do, how to use them. And Sean's a professional general contractor, so he's gonna be able to interject and share his point of view. I thought it'd be kinda of nice to have the point of view of me, who is kind of your typical DIYer, and then Sean, who has a lot more experience with these tools. So let's get started. The first tool I would recommend you purchase, number one, would be a drill. So this is going to help you build your Ikea furniture. It's going to be a ton faster than using a screwdriver. In all cases, it'll be a lot faster. You'll just have to buy a set of bits for it, for Robertson, which is the square bits, and then a Phillips, which is the star bits, which are on there right now. And that should just about do you for all Ikea stuff. These also come in handy when you're hanging up pictures, mirrors, artwork, and all that kind of thing too. This one here is a Bosch. Sean actually bought this one for me because he likes these ones the best. My favorite tool line would be the Ryobi one, and they do have a drill that goes with these ones as well, and they're quite inexpensive, so nice if you don't wanna spend a ton of money on your tools. I'm gonna to make sure to link all of these tools down in the description box below if you wanna purchase them for yourself. For all of these tools, including this drill, make sure you read through the whole instruction manual that the tool comes with. Make sure you do get a professional to show you exactly how to use the tool, because safety is definitely number one with these. So after you watch this video and you purchase your tool, make sure that you follow all of the safety precautions in the manual of your tool. It's really easy to change the bit in your drill. To change out the bit on a drill, best way to do it, it's an automatic locking. So it will just slide out. You spin the chuck, it's called, and then that tightens her down, and then you got her working. Easy. <laughs> Now that you have your drill, the next tool that I would recommend you purchasing is a finishing nailer. So this is my finishing nailer right here. Sean has one or maybe two of them as well. I like this one, it's the Ryobi one. It comes with a battery that you can use for all of their different tools. This is fantastic because if you're doing things like adding some trim work to your home, a feature wall, if you're doing small little builds with one by twos or two by fours even, you can use this to nail your pieces together. The finishing brad nails are really small, so if you're putting up trim, you can easily fill those tiny little holes and paint them. So I've used this for feature walls, I've used this to put casing around doors and windows, for baseboards, I've also used it to make wood signs as well. best way to operate this is read the instruction booklet first of course but the basic operation is that you'll always have a slide to put your nails in always got to put your nails into the bottom of it slider closed when you push down on it the safety will disengage and you can pull the trigger to shoot your nail these do like to jam up sometimes so every read your instruction manual but most of the time the generic form is to have something on the front here that you can just flip up and then that actually releases it so the nails will come out and then you can get it unjammed and then it just clicks back in place. Uh, these ones are really nice for that because they usually don't need a tool on these consumer ones. On the ones I have it's usually a Allen key or something but the instruction booklet will always tell you. So 
once you have your drill, you have your finishing nailer, the next power tool that I would recommend for you to buy is a miter saw. So I have this little one here. This one's also a Ryobi and it's a little seven and a half inch guy and I find this one is going to be able to cut all of the trim and small pieces of wood that I need for most of my DIYs. With the miter saw, you can cut wood at a 90 degree angle. You can also cut it at 45 degree angle so that you can create frames around things like casing around doors or frames for artwork. I also use this one for small crafts when I'm cutting things like dowels and even sticks and things. Basic operation is usually have a lock on the system. So the lock is will release the blade to rise up. Make sure your guard is operational in place, moving as you're moving it up and down. Then to make your cut, line up your material to the back of the guard on the saw, squeeze any safety and trigger, and then move the saw down gently and make your cut. Most saws out there are right-handed, so you will have to, the safest way to do it is of course to have your right hand on the blade and your other hand off to the side. Always at least four to six inches away from this area kind of thing as you're cutting. And of these three, I would say the miter saw is the most dangerous of the tools. You could definitely do the most damage if you aren't using it correctly with the miter saw. So again, double check that manual, make sure that you have someone that knows how to use the tool, work it with you and show you at first so that you use this one safely. There is also another option to this, which is not the power option, which is called a miter box and it is just basically a hand saw with a box that you can put your trim in and then it gives you the angles that you need that you put your saw blade into. So if you are nervous about using a power saw, that's a great option for you. And if you had the drill and the finishing nailer and the miter box, that would be a great option for you. So that's a quick overview of the three tools that I would recommend getting if you want to start using power tools, if you love DIYing and want to do it quicker and get into even more fun, exciting projects. Again, I'm going to link all of these down in that description box below so you can go check them out and start buying them and collecting tools for your own DIY supply. Anything else you want to say? I like collecting tools. Yeah, Sean has um, a few tools. <laughs> I have quite a few tools. <laughs> he loves his tools. <laughs> so you never know, you might become a tool collector like Sean. <laughs> I would love to hear from you. Let me know if you've used any of these tools or if you have any other suggestions of tools that beginning DIYers should start with. As far as power tools go, let us know down in those comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm going to leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next right up here. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.